The R7-260 is a lesser known video card, based on the same GCN2 architecture as the more famous R9-290X. And while the chip does have feature level support as its bigger cousin, does it also have enough computing power to be useful in 2024? This is not the first time we are testing this card, so I'll only mention that it has merely 20% more shader cores than the previously reviewed HD 7770, but the same count of ROPs. It also benefits from 33% faster memory clocks. For the rest of the GPU specs, the GPU-Z window shown on screen should have you covered. As for thermals, the two fans and solid aluminum heatsink keep the card in the low 70 Celsius in load, for a delta over ambient of less than 50 C. But I like my cards cool, so I use the more aggressive fan curve that drops the temperature by around 10 degrees. The test system is using the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon, paired with 32GB of DDR3 RAM running in dual channel at 1600MHz. As per the new list of games, we'll start off with Fallout 4, where at 1080 resolution and low settings, the R7-260 manages 49fps on average and 42fps 41% lows in Diamond City, basically the worst case scenario. This then had me pushing for high settings, but at the same resolution and test scenario, the average dropped below 30 and the 1% lows went in the cinematic range. 1600 by 900 high settings is however a good compromise in my opinion, retaining quite pleasant visuals while at the same time averaging 37 fps in Diamond City. The 1% lows also managed to stay above 30. Apex Legends gets its 1% lows above 60 fps only at 720 resolution and low settings. The R7-260 averages 104 fps and said 1% lows are in the low 70s. If you're in the more casual player side of the spectrum, then 1600 by 900 and even 1080 resolution might do it for you, with averages at 82 and 66 fps respectively, and 1% lows at 56 and 45 fps respectively. Seeing Shadow of the Tomb Raider running on slower cards gave me some hope, and the R7-260 did not disappoint. At low settings, the card averaged 42 fps at 1080 resolution, and the 1% lows managed to stay above 30. Lowering the resolution will increase these numbers, with 720 resolution having the card average 68 fps and providing 1% loss of 39. Counter Strike 2 will run above 60 fps even in full HD on the R7-260. Lower settings is the key here, and the card averaged 80 fps. As for the 1% loss, 66 fps. This is good enough for me, but lowering the resolution will increase these up to almost 120 fps on average at 720 resolution. Borderlands 3 ran significantly better on the R7-260 compared to the HD7770. The Bonaire chip managed 61 FPS for the average and 42-41% lows at the same 720 resolution and low settings. This sounds great on paper, and it's a significant improvement over the previous tested card. But the 1% lows I got for the first run, same conditions, were in the single digits. Once everything was loaded, the second run gave that good 1% loss of 42. The card will also run the game almost fine at 1080 resolution, with the 1% lows almost reaching 30 fps. Both Fortnite and Fortnite Reload ran just fine on the R7-260. In performance mode, the regular game had averages run between 75 and 132 fps, at 1080 and 720 resolution respectively, and the 1% lows between 24 and 65. The small map of the reload mode is the main factor in more than doubling the performance, and occasionally getting a CPU bottleneck. Averages ran between 175 FPS in Full HD and 237 FPS at 720 resolution. The 1% lows were between 117 and 158 FPS respectively. I actually started testing the R7-260 with Terminator resistance, and I was pleasantly surprised by the increase of performance over the HD7770. The Bonaire chip averaged 50 FPS and provided 1% loss of 40, but unlike the Cape Verde GPU, the R7-260 did this at full 1080 resolution. To have a like-for-like -like comparison, I collect the data also for 720 resolution, and the 91 FPS on average is about 30 FPS higher than what the previous card got. I'm okay with playing Overwatch 2 at low settings at 1080 resolution on the R7-260. The card averaged 87 FPS and more importantly had the 1% lows in the mid-60s. For my 60Hz monitor, this is fine. 
you can get higher FPS at lower resolutions. The average can get as high as 179 FPS at 720 resolution and over 140 FPS for the 1% lows. Compared to the last year's result, however, I could notice a performance loss of about 10% for all resolutions. <sighs> ZZZ, I hardly knew thee. While the performance of the card is more than acceptable, as seen on screen, wasting 45 minutes in game for a resource check is not. I really don't have a lot of time at hand and unfortunately, ZZZ will do what Genshin Impact did for the exact same reason provide more free space on my storage device. Dota 2 plays well on a lot of old GPUs and the R7 to 60 is no exception. At 1080 resolution, low settings, except the render scale that's set to 100%, the card averaged 83 FPS and provided 1% lows of 47. I make sure to use the same replay file and the stats are collected from a time frame that includes a couple of team fights. To my untrained eye, the game runs fine. I tested the R7 to 16 control using the low settings and 720 resolution. The average FPS was in the low 60s and the 1% lows managed to stay about 30. As per usual, the test consists in a run back and forth between ventilation and the top of the NCB reactor. The gameplay is fine and if you own this card, then keep an eye on Epic Games. The game has the habit of popping up as a freebie at times. I run the last benchmark in GTA 5 at 1080 resolution and low settings. The R7-60 averaged 106 FPS and the 1% lows ran at 70 FPS. The card runs the game just fine and there is quite a bit of room to improve visuals. Warframe ran almost identically as last year. The performance delta was less than a few percents and can be attributed to variances in the gameplay. At 1080 resolution and low settings, the R7-60 averaged 140 FPS and also got 91 FPS for the 1% lows. As I'm sure I mentioned last year, you can safely increase the visuals, you have the headroom. Rainbow Six Siege also ran almost the same as last year, so to no surprise, the Bonaire powered card averaged between 57 and 146 FPS, with the resolution tested being 1080 and 720, and the scale factors used being 100% and 50%. If you want the 1% lows to stay above 60 FPS, 720 resolution is your best bet. 1080 and 50% render scale can do it as well, but there is little margin to accommodate for performance differences between the benchmark run and the actual match. There has to be something really wonky about the R7-60. The card doesn't seem to be very popular and the same goes for its rebrand, the R7-360, despite providing decent performance in the easiest to run eSports titles. And for just 10 extra watts listed for the TDP, the R7-260 provides quite a big boost in performance of the HD7770, as seen from Terminator Resistance and Control, two of the games that I found to be more enjoyable on the Bonaire card. Reviews from back in the day would also have the R7-260 in a weird spot. Too close in price to the full Bonaire XTX powered HD7790, while not quite delivering that level of performance. But we'll get to that variant of the chip in a later video, when we'll review a rebrand of the HD7790, the R7-260X. As for this one, well, you suffered enough, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for the next one.